Hello, and welcome to our online presentation of HIP School. My name is Wendy Ciperni, and I'm the Bundled Care Coordinator here at Southlake. During today's presentation, we will be reviewing the following. What to expect before, during, and after your surgery. What you will need to do to prepare for and recover after your surgery. How to care for your new joint. And how to plan for your discharge home. You will hear today from members of our team consisting of nursing, physiotherapy, and occupational therapy. They will be reviewing inpatient and outpatient expectations as well as demonstrating exercises and equipment that you will be required to have arranged prior to surgery in order for you to have a successful outcome. Along your journey for your planned hip replacement surgery, you may hear the term bundled care. It is the term given to the funding that Southlake receives from the Ministry of Health to provide you with your joint replacement surgery. In April of 2018, we became a pilot project for this funding formula, along with seven other hospitals in the province. In April of 2019, every hospital in Ontario fell under this funding model for joint replacement surgeries. As the coordinator for this program, I am the dedicated patient resource to support patients and caregivers. My contact information is included in this presentation. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns you may have along the way. As this is a planned surgery, there is an expectation from a patient perspective for you to have all your plans in place before your surgery moves forward. There have been many changes over the past couple of years for anyone that has had previous joint replacement surgery or know someone that has. These educational sessions are provided to our patients so they are aware of all the changes that have come about. One of the biggest changes is there is no further in-home assistance or inpatient rehab treatment available to post-op patients in the province of Ontario. The Ministry of Health has clawed back the funding for this. You may have received these services in the past after surgery, but unfortunately, you do not qualify for them now. If you are currently on service with the LIN, you will need to touch base with your LIN coordinator to discuss your treatment plans. You must have a dedicated coach to stay with you for at least one week after your surgery. It can be your spouse, extended family, or a friend. It does not have to be someone to watch over you 24-7, but they should be available to check on you regularly after you leave the hospital and to perhaps help you with household chores, monitor your pain control, and encourage you to do your exercises. We realize that this is a surgical procedure, and if you do not have a support person at home or an appropriate alternate plan, your surgery will be deferred as it is unsafe for your surgeon to move forward. The surgery is life-altering, but not life-threatening, so there is time for you to plan for a successful outcome. You will be discharged the day following your surgery, or possibly the day of surgery, if you've discussed that with your surgeon, as long as you are medically stable and have met your discharge criteria from a physio perspective. You will need to make arrangements for someone to take you home once you have been cleared for discharge by the team. If you live alone, have no family or social supports when going home, or would like supportive care following your hospital stay, many local retirement homes offer respite care for a short-term stay. Arrangements for this private service need to be made in advance of your admission to hospital, as there is paperwork that needs to be filled in by your family physician, as well as a chest x-ray to ensure that you are not bringing something communicable into the full-time residence. Your discharge date will not be delayed if a pre-arranged respite bed is not available on your day of discharge. Please be aware that discharges do occur on weekends and plan for this accordingly. During your stay at respite, services provided may include 24-7 supervised care with an emergency call system, assistance with bathing and showering, daily housekeeping and meals. Be aware that some facilities may have minimum stay requirements and that you will be required to cover all the costs for your stay and transportation to and from the facility and any scheduled appointments while you are there. I will also be the person to help you organize your outpatient physio if needed. We have partner clinics throughout the province of Ontario that will be available for you to attend if you are unable to attend South Lake that will provide your treatment and Southlake will cover the cost, but only at approved clinics, not all clinics. Hip physio is generally once every two to three weeks following best practice guidelines and your initial appointment will be approximately seven to 10 days after surgery, 
but you will have exercises upon discharge from the hospital to do in the interim. If you choose to continue your physio treatment with a private clinic that you may have attended previously, you will be responsible to utilize your private health benefits or pay out of pocket for these sessions. We understand that you may have a level of trust developed with your physiotherapist and those are important relationships to continue if you choose. You will not be allowed to drive yourself to these appointments until cleared by your surgeon to do so. If you're not able to arrange transportation, there are options within the community, for example, chats, YRT Mobility, which is an application that takes four to six weeks to process, taxi, or Uber. We have been asked by the Ministry of Health to have patients fill in a survey labeled PROMS, which stands for Patient Reported Outcome Measures. This survey will let your healthcare team know how you're feeling and doing. We would ask that you complete your PROMS after today's educational session, as well as three to five months post-op and one year post-op. You will receive an email, if you have consented for electronic communication, with the information of how to log on with the link as well as reminders along the way at the three to five month mark and the one year mark. You will now hear from our charge nurse on MSK, followed by one of our physiotherapists and then our occupational therapist to round out our presentation. We appreciate your time today and I will follow up with you prior to surgery in order to make sure that you have all your plans in place for a successful outcome. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Hip School, Patient Preparation for Total Hip Arthroplasty Surgery. Remember to attend all appointments. You may have several appointments to attend prior to your surgery, including your primary care provider, preoperative clinic at South Lake, the anesthesia and nursing, specialty appointments as indicated, lab for preoperative blood work. For all appointments, please be sure to bring your medication or your health card, medication list, bring any paperwork provided by your surgeon's office, bring your guide to total hip replacement surgery booklet, and arrive on time. Preparing for your surgery. Remember this, to practice the strategies and exercises that are outlined in your guide to hip to total hip replacement surgery given to you at the prehab education centers sessions at the total joint solutions maintain a healthy well-balanced diet at home we strongly urge you to maintain a healthy weight prior to joint replacements surgery to minimize risk of infection if you smoke or use smokeless tobacco, we strongly encourage you to stop at least two to three weeks or more before your total joint replacement surgery. Designate a coach. Before your surgery, you will be required to designate someone to be your coach. Your, court, your coach should be identified by now. The role of your coach is an important one. The person will support you as you prepare for and recover from surgery, keep you motivated, assist you with your exercises, and remind you of your post-operative precautions. If you live alone, you need to make arrangements so that your coach, friend, or family is staying with you. We recommend for someone to stay with you at least one week upon discharge. Preoperative appointment. Prior to your surgery, you will be booked for an appointment at the preoperative clinic at South Lake. You will be seen by a nurse, pharmacist, and anesthesiologist. Please bring a list of medications from your pharmacy. Your medications, including prescription, over-the-counter herbals, vitamins, puffers, eye drops, and or creams. The completed preoperative history and physical exam form filled out by your primary care provider and your guide to total hip replacement surgery. Medications to stop prior to your surgery. Medications that you currently take may prove harmful during surgery because they thin your blood and increase the risk of bleeding after surgery. 
Others may contribute to complications and we may ask that you not take them in the days prior to your surgery. Follow the recommendations that your health care team will provide in preoperative clinic. They will guide you as to which medications to stop before your surgery and which ones to take the day of your surgery. Three days before your surgery, perform the preoperative wash using sponges provided in the pre-op clinic according to directions given. Begin using the preoperative sponges three days before your scheduled surgery. For example, if your surgery is scheduled for Friday, you would start using the sponges on Tuesday. It is best to apply the sponges in the morning or evening after a shower or bath. The night before your surgery. Unless otherwise instructed by your surgeon, follow the instructions given to you in pre-op clinic regarding eating and drinking. Apple juice, black coffee or tea is now permitted as instructed. Please refrain from smoking the morning of surgery. Do not wear makeup or nail polish and shower the morning of surgery if possible. The day of your surgery. Arriving at the hospital, your surgeon's office will instruct you on an expected arrival time. Upon arrival, check in at the Welcome Centre at the East Main entrance. Preparation for your surgery will be an application of ID armband, change into hospital gown, your belongings will be placed in a bag with your name on it. Nurses will review your medication records, take your vital signs, perform a brief exam, start your IV and arrange for any outstanding tests. You'll have a visit from the anesthesia who will discuss with you spinal or general anesthesia. IV antibiotics will be started. What to expect after your surgery. Following your surgery, you will be admitted to a hospital bed. Frequent nursing assessments and checking of vital signs. Numbness to both legs and feet from your spinal anesthetic. You'll have an Aquacel bandage on your hip. Deep breathing and coughing as well as ankle pumping are encouraged. New and previous medications will be provided as well as IV antibiotics. Sitting at the bedside on a, on a chair or the toilet the day of your surgery. Physiotherapy and occupational therapy evaluations and treatment. A catheter may be needed to be inserted if you are unable to empty your bladder after four to six hours. Your bladder will empty better if sitting or standing for men. Lying in bed and trying to empty your bladder is next to impossible. There is a possibility that your roommate may be of the opposite sex. Staff will ensure your privacy during your care. Your incision and dressing. Your dressing will remain in place for two to three weeks until you follow up with your surgeon. You may shower, but avoid immersing your dressing for example, swimming or taking a bath. It is normal to see blood and condensation in your dressing. Contact your surgeon if your dressing is draining or is completely saturated with blood or fluid. There is a possibility of redness or a pink colored area around your dressing. Check to see if the anesthetic, antiseptic solution used during your surgery by wiping with a damp cloth for removal. To reduce the risk of infection, avoid touching your dressing. Staples will be removed at approximately two to three weeks in the fracture clinic unless otherwise directed by your surgeon. Your pain control. You will be asked several times by several different uh, hospital employees to rate your pain. You'll be asked by nursing, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, Physicians, the nurse that uh, manages pain, the nurse practitioner, and will be asking you to rate your pain between 0 and 10. 0 means no pain, and 10 is the most excruciating pain you've ever had in your life. We don't expect anybody to be at a 0 because you've just had surgery, so you will have some pain, 
but we don't want anybody to reach the level of a 10. This stops you from doing anything that is required for your recovery and uh, for breaking in your new hip. So for pain control, the pain will be controlled by medication taken by mouth. Taking medication as ordered will allow you to participate better in your recovery. Please ask for pain medication as needed. So if you have a pain that's rated at a five or higher, then you need to ask for something for pain. The pain medication is ordered as needed, so it won't be given. Everybody is different. Everybody's pain control is different. So it's ordered as needed within a three to four hour period. So if you're having the pain, you have to let us know. Otherwise, we assume that everything is fine and you're comfortable without the pain medication. Pain is normal and is not expected to be rated as zero when in the hospital. Our goal will be for your pain to rate no more than five to 10 at rest, five out of 10 at rest. Pain will worsen when you are moving, though it is necessary to move. We tell our patients who have total joint replacements that your new hip is like having a new shoe. If you don't wear it in right from the very beginning, it'll never fit right. So it is very important that you do your exercises and you do get up and move as instructed by your physiotherapist in order for your hip to work properly. Medications that are given in the hospital will be your usual medications, which are confirmed with our pharmacist pain medication, laxatives, and blood thinners. When at home, speak to your pharmacist for medication recommendations specific for you. Extended release Tylenol or Tylenol for arthritis should be taken every eight hours and your prescribed narcotic medication only as needed. Narcotics are very constipating, so be sure to consume adequate fluids and a high fiber diet to ensure regular bowel movements. If your bowels haven't moved for two or more days, then you will need to take a laxative that you can buy over the counter so that you don't become too constipated. Confusion after surgery. Some patients may experience confusion after surgery. If you or your family feel you are experiencing confusion or hallucinations, inform the healthcare team. Ensure adequate fluid intake. This helps to flush a lot of the medications that we're giving you, plus the anesthetic, out of your system, which can cause some confusion for patients. Manage your pain and have a family member or friends stay with you. Post-op day one, the day of or after your surgery, lab work will will possibly be ordered depending on your surgeon. You'll have an x-ray of your new joint. The physical and occupational therapy will help you with gait training, how to safely use a walking aid, stair training, exercise and education to care for your new joint, review activities of daily living, and coaches are encouraged to attend physio and occupational therapy sessions and you will be discharged home after you have um, accomplished uh, a a safe manner with um, using the walking aid and physio feels that you are safe enough to be discharged the day after surgery. Post-op day one, the day or after your surgery, prior to your discharge, you'll get in and out of bed. You'll be able to walk to the bathroom Get up and down from a chair or toilet. Walk a short distance with a walking aid. Perform practicing stairs and review your exercises for home. Recovering at home. Pain, bruising and swelling are all normal. You've just had surgery, so you will have all of these things. Managing your swelling. You can use ice on your operative hip for 10 to 15 minutes every two hours. Avoid direct contact on your skin with the ice because this can create some um, additional uh, inflammation. So make sure that you cover your hip prior to putting the ice on with either a light towel or uh, sometimes we also use uh, pillowcases. 
Continue for 7 to 10 days as needed afterwards. Lie down for 15 to 30 minutes, 3 to 4 times per day, and pump your ankles up and down to help move the fluid out of your leg. <clears throat> Swelling can be experienced up to 6 weeks after your surgery and is nothing to be alarmed about. Diet. Appetite is often reduced. Eat a balanced diet, healthy diet, and rest as needed. Recovering at home should include good rest, so patients report that sleep is often disrupted for a number of weeks following surgery due to many factors including pain, discomfort, and medication use. Sleep positions will be reviewed in the hospital. Lying on your back is the safest position with hip precautions. Hello and welcome to the physical therapy section of hip school. Throughout this section, you will learn about the anatomy of the hip, as well as the therapeutic exercise that is required of you following your admission and discharge from hospital. A healthy hip joint is comprised of a ball and socket, and that's formed by the thigh bone, also known as the femur, and the socket that the uh, femur fits in through, known, known as the acetabulum. What you don't see in the diagram on the right side of your screen are all the muscles and ligaments that help keep the hip joint in place and secure, as well as to move it through the, your normal range of motion. When a hip joint becomes arthritic, the ends of the bone, meaning the acetabulum of the socket or the end of the thigh bone or the ball of the femur, which normally house articular or joint cartilage that helps it move smoothly and freely. That cartilage in an arthritic hip joint wears away. And what you see on x-ray denoted in the right side of the screen is a loss of the normal joint space that you would see on the films. So on the x-ray films to the left, you see a normal joint space between the ball and the socket. And on the right, you can see how the joint space has been eliminated. And that's due to arthritic changes about the hip. When a hip joint becomes arthritic, oftentimes it is associated with pain. And that pain uh, causes the hip joint to function differently overall reducing strength and flexibility or reduced ability to move the joint through its normal range of motion. When your surgeon replaces your hip, what they do is remove the top portion of your thigh bone and they replace the top portion as well as with a artificial stem and ball and they also replace the socket. There are many different types of hip replacements. Please speak to your surgeon about what particular type that you have and the particular metals that it is comprised of, as those are can vary between vendors. When your surgeon replaces your hip, they have to access the, the bones through a number of ligaments and muscles. And because of this, your hip joint is not as stable as it was prior to your operation. Now, there are various methods in which the sur a surgeon can use to access your hip to perform the surgery. They can access the your hip through the side of your leg, or this, and that's known as a lateral approach. In this case, you have a certain type of, or a certain number of hip precautions. So if it's a lateral, during a lateral approach, your surgeon will dislocate your hip, which also stretches the tissues around the hip joint. And that does put you at risk for dislocation. The duration of your hip precautions will vary based on your, sur at your surgeon's discretion. The first hip precaution is hip flexion. After your hip replacement, having a lateral approach, you would not be allowed to bend, creating a 90 degree or greater than 90 degree 
angle at your hip joint. So in the picture denoted to the right, this person is bending down to pick up an object off the floor. This would be a motion or an activity that you would have to avoid when you return home. Bending at past 90 degree can happen in multiple different positions. So for example, if you're lying in a bed, you cannot sit up in the bed to, to reach down towards your toes. And in sitting in a chair, it is easy to break the 90 degree position if you're reaching forward or reaching down to the floor while sitting. All of these motions and these activities should be avoided until your surgeon deems that, that you no longer need to follow them. The diagrams below will indicate uh, positions to avoid. So low couches or low benches are certainly uh, to be avoided as well as sitting upright in a bed like the picture denotes there to the right. Another precaution to avoid an activity to avoid following hip surgery from a lateral approach is crossing the legs. So this should not be, your legs should not be crossed in any position that is any position of sitting, lying or standing. When you awake from your surgery, you'll note that there is a pillow or a wedge between your legs. This is to ensure that you don't inadvertently cross your legs. Uh, many times those wedges are foam in nature and they're single patient use items so just ask your nurse or other member of the team if you can take those home with you. The last precaution is rotation and if you look below to the diagram on the bottom left portion of your screen this individual is crossing their legs. Now certainly we discussed in the slide deck before that that crossing the legs was an activity that you should avoid but what it actually this picture denotes is a person is rotating their leg outwards to the extreme. Uh, the example on the bottom right portion of your screen, the patient is lying with their feet turned outwards. These are two positions you should avoid, but also when you're standing and turning in a standing position, you must ensure that you pick up your feet so as not to rotate through your hip. For those having a hip replacement through an anterior approach, you will have different hip precautions that you'll have to follow following your surgery. Anterior hip precautions include, to include the being careful to avoid extending the leg behind you, so extending the hip backwards. So for example, if you're backing up to a chair to sit down, it's advisable to lead with your non-operative leg. We also will want to avoid activities like large lunges, or when laying in a bed, you don't want to move to the side of the bed and let the leg drop off while you can remain lying in a supine position. Early on after surgery, we will also avoid bridging, meaning bending your knees up in bed into uh, a crook position and lifting your backside off the bed. This type of activity can be initiated when you re uh, return to your outpatient physio appointments. Attending physical therapy at South Lake is certainly recommended. It's also recommended to perform the exercises at home that you were provided by your therapist in the hospital. You are rec it is recommended to take your pain medication as needed prior to your exercise. And please note that the recovery of your function is dependent upon the effort that you put into your exercises and getting around throughout your activities during the day. We ask that you continue to, con to use the walking aid that you're advised in the hospital. This may include a walker, such that has two brakes, two, four wheels and a seat, known as a rollator walker, crutches, or a two-wheeled walker. This conversation and recommendation will come from your physical therapist prior to your discharge home. At this point in time prior to surgery, if you can reach out to look to see if any of your friends or family have a walker that you're able to borrow, this might 
ease the need or reduce the need for you to go out and rent a device prior to your discharge home. If you're borrowing a walker or if you're renting a walker, you want to be able to size that walker appropriately. To do so, you stand up as tall as you can on, and with your hands by your side and the handle height of the walker should be at the same level as your wrist crease or where your watch would sit at your wrist. Prior to your surgery, we encourage you to have your physiotherapy arranged. To help you do so, the Pathway Administrator at Southlake can be reached and will assist you in this task. Therapy normally occurs once every two to three weeks for approximately a half an hour in duration with a physiotherapist. During the time between your therapy sessions, you will perform the exercises provided by your therapist. In order to, for your hip to function normally again, it is imperative that you carry out the exercises provided to you by your therapy team. If you don't plan to attend physical therapy at Southlake, it is encouraged you contact our pathway administrator to understand which clinics closer to your home that we have partnered with. Occupational therapy. The role of the occupational therapist is to promote your independence and in daily activities after your surgery and to make suggestions for home safety. Our expectation is that you take the time to make your home safe, rent or purchase your equipment, and arrange the support that you will need upon discharge. The purpose of this presentation is to help you prepare for your hospital stay and your return home afterwards. Your stay in the hospital is brief. You may be leaving the same day as your surgery or the following day. Please scan this list for items that you may want to bring to the hospital. Please label your belongings and when packing clothing and footwear, keep in mind that you can expect some swelling after surgery, so it would be a good idea to bring clothes that are loose and comfortable. You may want to consider bringing some ginger ale, paper, pen, and your walker and your crutches. The physical therapist can take a look at your walker and crutches and size them according to your needs. We do not suggest that you bring any valuables or large sums of money as we do not have anywhere where we can lock your belongings. Since you are coming in for a planned surgery, you must take the opportunity now to prepare and ensure that your home is set up safely. You need to make sure that railings are secured. You will likely be going home using a walker, so ensure that you have space in doorways and around furniture to navigate a walker. We are always concerned about risk of falling as you recover, so please remove clutter any tripping hazards, and consider storing commonly used items between shoulder and hip level, as well as lighting your pathway from the bedroom to the bathroom. It is important that you consider where you will sit at home. Remember that your hips must be higher than your knees when sitting. So think about using a dining room chair or a wing back chair. Ideally, it should have sturdy armrests. We strongly caution against sitting on couches, rocking chairs, lazy boy chairs, wheelchairs, low beds, and or having your feet raised on footstools or ottomans. Here's a picture of someone's home. Notice that electrical cords are out of the way and that scatter rugs are removed to reduce tripping hazards. Notice that a cushion has been added to a low seat to raise the height of the chair. You can also obtain chair blocks that fit underneath the legs of the chair that can raise chairs. Notice that the person is wearing supportive footwear. Think about keeping items that you need within easy reach. Consider wearing a fanny pack to transport necessary items like a cell phone, your medication, and contact numbers, as we expect that both of your hands will be on the walker. 
Your stay in the hospital is brief and your recovery will continue once you're home. The initial focus of your energy once home will be on managing your personal care and on your therapy. Consider preparing meals in advance or stocking up on frozen meals. Make sure that you arrange assistance for heavy household duties like lawn care, laundry, changing the bed, and vacuuming. You will require someone to drive you to your therapy appointments. Please arrange for your equipment prior to your surgery. You should have a designated, supportive family member or friend stay with you for at least a week once home. It may be helpful to have someone close by when you begin showering. If you live alone and do not have anybody that can stay with you while you recover, you may consider respite care. If you do consider staying in respite care, you do need to make arrangements prior to your surgery. Your family physician will need to fill out appropriate paperwork and you will require a chest x-ray. There is a fee associated with respite care. The fee covers accommodation, your meals, on-site emergency response, as well as assistance with bathing once a week and cleaning your room. Should you require any additional assistance, for example, transportation to your meals or more help around your self-care, that can be provided at an extra cost. Please contact the Pathway Administrator for further information at the number listed on the slide. It is important that you arrange for someone to drive you home at any time during the day that you are discharged. Ensure that you have a vehicle that you can easily get in and out of. We discourage you from getting into a low vehicle. In order to get into the vehicle safely, your occupational therapist will demonstrate the proper technique with you. If you do have a long trip, make sure that you're pumping your ankles and that you're taking breaks every hour, getting out of the vehicle and walking for a short distance. You are responsible for renting or purchasing equipment from a home medical supplier or borrowing equipment from family and friends prior to your surgery. With regards to bathroom safety equipment, you will require a raised toilet seat and separate toilet rails or a height adjustable commode seat to ensure that your hips are higher than your knees when sitting on the toilet. If you're in a multi-level home, you should consider one set of equipment for each floor. You will also need to obtain long handle dressing aids such as a reacher, shoehorn, and sock aid for lower body dressing. Please ensure that you have a walker, whether it's a two-wheeled walker or a rollator walker, as well as a cane. Optional equipment for going home include a wedge cushion that you can easily put on a chair or transport with you, chair or bed blocks that can increase the height of a chair or a bed, as well as grab bars in your bathroom. If you are getting grab bars, please ensure that you're having these professionally installed. Here's a picture of a bathroom that has equipment in place. If you look to the right, you'll see that a commode chair has been placed over the toilet. There is a tub transfer bench over the tub, and this will allow you to sit at the edge of the bench and slide your legs in. There's a handheld shower install that will make bathing easier, as well as grab bars. If you are going to be using a bath mat, we recommend that you use one that has a rubber bottom to it. Otherwise, remove your bath mat completely. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how to go about using your long handle dressing aids to put on underwear, pants, socks, shoes. If you're having a hip replacement, you will require this equipment to get dressed. If you're having a knee replacement, it, this equipment is optional. So the first thing that you're gonna make sure is that you're sitting on a bed or on a chair to get dressed. Make sure that you have everything that you need beside you. In order to get underwear on, pants on, you're gonna use a long-handled reacher. The long-handled reacher acts like an extension of your arm so that you don't have to bend over. It has a handle on one end and then it's got a gripper on the other end. When you get dressed or when you're going to put pants on or underwear on, you're always going to dress the operated side first. So let's say I'm having my right hip replaced. So I'm going to put my underwear or my pants on my lap. 
I'm going to take my reacher and put the gripper part on the waistband, right about where a pocket would be. Then I'm going to squeeze the handle, swing the pants out in front of me, slide my foot in, and then I'm going to pull up with my hand. So the whole time I'm avoiding having to bend over. Once you get to about just the mid thigh area, you can let go of your reacher, use your hands and pull the pants up the rest of the way. Now you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, the gripper goes on the waistband where a, a pocket would be. You're going to slide your foot in and then you're going to pull up until about mid thigh level and then go ahead and pull your pants up. What you're going to do from this point, you're going to push up from the bed and you're going to pull your pants and your underwear on. In order to take your pants off or your or, uh, underwear off, you're always going to undress the good side first. So you're going to be standing. You will have the bed or the chair behind you. Let your pants and your underwear drop. You're going to sit down, take your reacher again, and then just undress the good side followed by the operated side. In order to get your socks on, you're going to be using a sock aid. So you're going to be using a sock aid to put your socks on and it does work better if you use a tennis sock or a shorter sock. So the way you're going to put your sock on, you're going to take your sock and put it on the sock aid like this. And then you're going to swing this on the floor slide my foot in and I'm going to slide it all the way to the end of the sock, grab onto the strings here and I'm going to pull and then your sock is on. In order to take your socks off, you can use your long handled reacher, you can put the gripper right at the edge of the sock here and then take your sock off. In order to put my shoes on, you can use a long handled reacher and you're just going to use that to help you slide your foot in your shoe and again that avoids you having to bend over. So just a reminder because you're not able to bend down to put your shoe on I would avoid wearing anything that has a shoelace. Um, I recommend something that you can just slide your foot into. The safest and easiest way to get in and out of a bathtub is to use a tub transfer bench. And you'll notice that this bench has two legs that sit inside the tub and then two legs that sit outside the tub. And this is height adjustable, so you would adjust it as high as you need it for yourself. When getting into the tub, what you want to do is you want to step back till you feel the tub transfer bench behind your good leg. Then what you want to do is slide your operated leg in front of you, reach back for the back of the tub transfer bench, and then you're going to sit. Once you're seated, lean back, slide all the way back, and at this point you can just swing your legs into the tub. In order to get out of the tub, you would just do the opposite. You would swing your legs and then just scoot forward. And then when you're getting up, you want to push up from the tub transfer bench, stand up, and then grab hold of your walker. So in order to get on and off your toilet, what you want to use is a raised toilet seat. And this seat gives you a little bit of extra height, so it makes it easier to get on and off. Additionally, you want to have some support so that you can grab hold of something when you're sitting on the toilet and push up when you're getting off. So the other thing that I would recommend is a VersaFrame and that attaches to the back of the toilet and it just gives you something to hold on to. So it supports you when you're going to sit on the toilet as well as you're able to push up from it to get off the toilet easier. I want to demonstrate the technique for getting in and out of the car. You will be able to sit in the front passenger side. What I would like you to do though, before your surgery or have a family or a friend do this for you, I want you to move the seat as far back as possible just to give you some extra leg room and then partially recline the back and you're going to leave the back reclined while you're sitting in the car. I also want you to roll down the window because you are going to hold on to the door of the car to help you to get in and out. So what you would be doing, let's say this is a passenger seat, I moved it back, I reclined it. So now that my seat is reclined, what you're going to do is step back till you feel 
the car behind you with your good leg. So let's say that's my left leg. At this point, what I'm gonna do is take my right hand and either put it on the frame of the car or on the headrest. And my other hand, I'm gonna put on the door. So if I've rolled down my window, you'll put your hand down. Before you go to sit, you're gonna slide your operated side forward, and then you're going to sit. Once seated, lean back a little bit and then scoop back as far as you can towards the driver's side and then you're going to swing both legs in at the same time and that's it in order to get out of the car you're just going to do the opposite you're going to swing your legs out you're going to scoot forward you're going to bend your good leg keep your operated leg straight and then you're going to push up from the car and grab hold of your walker you will have activity restrictions after your surgery. Please scan this list below for activities that you should consult your surgeon about prior to engaging in. Please complete the following prior to your surgery. Obtain a medication check from your pharmacy. Obtain and practice use of your reaching aids and your walking aids. Obtain and install all necessary equipment prior to your surgery. Identify your coach, organize for assistance at home, or arrange to have family stay with you, or make plans for respite care. Ensure that your home is prepared. So for example, remove your scatter rugs, make sure you have your railings installed. Make sure that you arrange for your transportation. You will need transportation to drive you the day of your surgery, as well as to pick you up at any time of the day of your discharge. Become familiar with the exercises prior to your surgery and also ensure that your therapy appointment has been arranged. If you have any questions about your care journey, please contact our pathway administrator at the number listed on the slide. The following websites offer additional information that you can refer to prior to your surgery. Good luck with your surgery and we look forward to meeting you soon.